The intention of this video is to show you how to play the game, how turns proceed, and how you eventually end up winning the game. There are also videos previous to this one for setting up the game and an introduction to the concept of the game. So if you haven't seen those yet, go ahead and start with those. Now on to how to play the game. The game comes with written rules, so if you need clarifications, you can always refer there. In addition, we have a user form and FAQ page at www.gbohawaii.com where you can also find any additional information you might need for gameplay. Each player, when starting their first turn, gets a chance to survey the field. They can look at available businesses and the cards in their hands, and then decide which county on the map they're going to start their player piece in. If you have the human resources that match up with one of the available businesses in a particular county, you might want to just go ahead and set up shop there for your first turn. You move county to county a fair bit during the game, so don't sweat this decision too much. Just try to get at least one business started in your first turn, if possible. To start your turn, you roll the dice and move that many spaces with your player piece that's on the outside track. The player piece on the map doesn't move at all based on dice roll. They move for other reasons. More on that in a minute. A player may then invest in some businesses by matching up resource cards and investment money with available businesses in the county where their player piece is. For instance, if a player wants to start this garden supply store in Kauai, their player piece must be in Kauai County, and they must have the resources listed on the card. In this case, the player would need a biological entrepreneur card and a green collar worker from the resource deck, plus 75k, k being short for a thousand, in investment money. But what happens if you don't have exactly the right human resources? First you can try trading with other players for their card you need, but you might expect to pay a hefty price depending on how nice other players are feeling today. You can also, at any time, trade three resource cards and or chance cards into their respective decks and draw one resource card off the top. Keep an eye out for the wild card, too. You can use a green MBA to serve as any other resource that you need. In addition, any entrepreneur card can be used as a green collar worker. You can also hire the human resources that you need. Salaries are all listed in the written instructions for reference. As a strategy tip for successful gameplay, we'll tell you that this is not the best option, but in a pinch, it's worth considering. So once you invest in this business, it pays you a dividend every turn hereafter. In this case, you receive 8k from the bank every turn from this garden supply store for every turn after the one in which you started it. Strategically, you'll want to start thinking about your environmental offsets. In this case, the garden supply store helps offset two cans of unhealthy processed imported food. Keep an eye on what offsets you're getting throughout the game as you calculate how to win, and watch what other players are accumulating too. Sometimes, the business you start will benefit from a business that gets started later. For instance, if you have invested in a green building retail store like the one on the left here, it will benefit you greatly when someone else, or you, invest in a green building company like the one on the right. Makes sense, right? A green building company would be buying a lot of stuff from a green building retail store, and they'd probably be sending a lot of referrals. So in the green field at the bottom of the card, you may note bonus resource cards that will come your way if someone starts other businesses, even if that someone is you. As soon as someone invests in a business, another gets drawn from the business card pile to replace it and is immediately available for investment so that eight businesses are always available for investment throughout the game. You can sell a business that you've invested in any time during the game. You will receive 50% of your original investment back from the bank, but you lose credit for the jobs created and environmental offsets earned. Another strategic tip, this is not your best move, but sometimes in a pinch, it's necessary. One really nice way to sell a business, though, is through an IPO or initial public offering. There's a chance card for an IPO and a space on the board as well. If you sell a business through an IPO, you get double the original investment back and get to keep the credits for both jobs and the eco credits that you've earned, though you earn no more dividends from that business. All this is also explained on the chance card for IPO and on the space on the board for IPOs. During your turn, you can also play chance cards. There is one chance card that you can play anytime, but otherwise it's typically only during your turn. Chance cards are just extra strategic bonuses that may help you achieve something good during your turn, so use them wisely. You may also need a permit to start some businesses, typically construction and large-scale projects. If so, you need to pay $10,000 to apply for the permit, then wait a turn and roll one die. If you get a 1 through a 5 on that roll, your permit is approved and it may be used immediately. To indicate the difference after it's approved, just flip the car over to the approved permit side of the card and put it on your section of the table. If you roll a 6, tough cookies, your permit is delayed for another round. There are other ways to get permits, and these will come up throughout the game, so keep an eye open for opportunities. Finally, you will have to move around the state of Hawaii's four main counties throughout the game to take advantage of the best investment opportunities. For instance, if your player piece is currently on the Big Island, Hawaii County, and you spot an investment you'd like to make in Kauai County, 
you can use one of your Outrigger cards at any time to move over. There are a few other opportunities to move as well, but the Outrigger cards are your main options. At the end of your turn, simply draw one resource card to declare that your turn is over. This is the end of your turn. No going back and saying, oh, but I meant to apply for a permit last turn. Nope. As soon as you grab that resource card, your turn is officially over and the next player's turn has begun. The player that first reaches one of the black policies and event spaces on the board stops there regardless of what they roll and flips over the policy card at that spot and puts it into play. That policy card stays active for the rest of the game unless otherwise noted on the card. After the policy card has been played, players may bypass that space. And remember, anytime someone rolls a 7, you draw an event card off the top of the deck. Immediately put that event card into play. In this case, if you draw the card that says Biotech Company sues local farmer for allegedly stealing their genetically modified seeds, everyone on the board has to band together to fight off the lawsuit if they have a sustainable food business. This is something that's very different than a policy because it happens in a very discreet manner. It happens and then it's done. So the event cards are played and then discarded, whereas the policy cards stay active for the rest of the game unless otherwise noted on the policy cards themselves. The first player to reach the governor's campaign space stops on that space. This is an opportunity to help the sustainability-friendly candidate win the governorship of Hawaii, but you're up against the oil industry's billions of dollars. They'd like to keep the status quo where all Hawaiians pay through the nose for electricity generated by burning foreign oil. And they know that chipping in for political campaigns is a great way to do that. So you must band together with other players in the green economy to contribute to the better candidate and then hope for the best. Read the rules on the board and good luck. Oh, did we mention the oil industry? Yeah, they're not super happy about this whole sustainability thing. Last year, Honolulu County tried to get a five cent fee levied on plastic bags, seeing as how our coral reefs are full of them, and we'd like the oil industry that created them to pay to clean it up, since that sort of thing hurts tourism, our main industry. The oil lobby didn't agree and absolutely descended on Honolulu, effectively bribing public officials by paying them quote unquote consulting fees and eventually defeated the legislation. In this game, the lobbyists go wherever the oil industry sends them, generally wreaking havoc everywhere they go. Whichever county the lobbyists are in, dividends for all sustainable businesses are cut in half. Several cards and spaces allow you or force you to move the lobbyists, so try to move them away from where your investments are. Only the person that has that card or lands on that space is allowed to decide where to move the lobbyists. There are no bribes of other players allowed in GBO Hawaii. And oh, just as a quick aside, the oil industry lobbyists make a great costume. This is from Halloween 2011. Play continues until one player crosses the POW, Hawaiian for finish, line. The person who went last to start the game always takes the last turn of the game, regardless of who crosses the POW line first. In essence, the only thing you have to remember is that everyone has an equal number of turns during the game. Beyond the POW line, any player that lands on one of those spaces follows the instructions on that space, and typically gets a bonus of one sort or another. But if you go too far, you end up in the ocean, you don't get any eco credits or bonuses. As mentioned at the beginning, the best triple bottom line return on investment wins the game. Now that the game is over, it's time to add up your score. You'll be adding the number of green jobs created, the number of eco credits, and the amount of money that you have to give you the people, planet, profit score for your game. For the eco credits, simply add all the dump trucks, barrels of oil, and cans of quote food that are in the red circle with a line through it on all of your investments, including any businesses that you sold through an IPO. Rank each player, so if one player offsets the most barrels of oil, they receive a first place ranking in that category. It's the cumulative score of these rankings that will determine the winner. After you've ranked the eco credits, do the same for jobs created. Add all of the human resource icons on your investments, both from green hard hats and from entrepreneur icons. For your financial return, you'll be adding all the capital investments that you have plus your liquid capital. In other words, add up all the investment costs mark I on your business cards plus your cash. Again, rank each player once you've added up everything. The winner of the game is the player with the lowest total rank. In this case, the monk seal did best in dump trucks, green jobs, and money, second best in barrels of oil, and third best in cans of processed food, resulting in a total score of 8, besting the humpback whales 10 and the koa trees 11. And that's it! We hope you enjoy many, many games of GBO Hawaii with friends and family and get excited about the world of sustainability. Trust us, sustainability and the green economy really is fun and very fulfilling in terms of a career. Thanks for watching and enjoy GBO Hawaii!